Pro is one of the most powerful tools in your toolkit as analysts and data scientists. It's a fully integrated analytics workstation that makes it easy for you to visualize and explore your data, ask and answer complex questions, and apply the science of where. We're constantly working to add new analytical capabilities to the platform, whether it's traditional spatial analysis techniques or more focused methods to do things like clustering, classification, and prediction. It, with the Pro 2.1 release, we focused a lot on building a number of machine learning techniques that do both spatial and multivariate clustering. These methods are often used as part of larger analytical workflows, helping to build a deeper understanding of underlying patterns and acting as a way to classify and differentiate between features. Let's first take a look at the new density-based clustering tool. These are reports of traffic congestion provided by Waze. We're looking here at 5 p.m. rush hour. So this is LA, and as we'd expect, really, whether it's rush hour or not, there's a lot of traffic. But looking at tens of thousands of points on a map really isn't telling us a whole lot. To help us find the natural spatial clusters in our data, we'll use the new density-based clustering tool, which lets us choose from three different clustering methods, dbscan, hdbscan, and optics. Now, not only does the tool output a map where we've used an extension of the four color theorem to ensure that similar colors are never too close together on the map, but when you use the optics algorithm, we also produce what's known as a reachability plot. The valleys in our reachability plot represent small distances between features within a single cluster. The peaks represent larger distances where we jump out of one cluster to either noise points or to the next cluster. Now, the reachability plot is really the basis for the underlying algorithm, but the plot's also a useful tool for us to help us figure out if we've chosen the right cluster sensitivity. And we can con continue our workflow and create ellipses around each of those clusters as an additional visualization technique. We might also use those ellipses to ask for feedback from drivers as they enter th those zones. But this is just 5 p.m. If we wanted to run this analysis for every hour of the day, for instance, we probably wouldn't want to do that manually. We can write a quick script that loops through our data, runs density-based clustering, and creates ellipses for each of those time intervals. And automating or simplifying a workflow is a great use of Python. But of course, we can do a lot more than that with Python. We can use it to develop sophisticated algorithms and tools. A great example is actually the density-based clustering tool we were just looking at. Quite a bit of density-based clustering is actually written in Python. And we use the same methods and capabilities that you have at your fingertips to build our own tools. In addition to pure spatial clustering, we also focused on multivariate clustering, both a non-spatial k-means algorithm and a spatially constrained method called SCATER. This is the result of running spatially constrained multivariate clustering on coastal ecological marine units, or EMUs. It uses a number of different attributes like dissolved oxygen, temperature, and salinity to differentiate between the world's oceans using both spatial and attribute characteristics. The box plot shows us that, for instance, salinity is a really good differentiator of the world's landlocked seas. The tool also calculates cluster membership probabilities, which show us those areas often on the borders between groups, where cluster membership could have easily flipped. So this area in the UK here could have easily been clustered with the colder, more northern oceans. These probabilities are critical for our understanding and our evaluation of the results of our analysis. We can use powerful, out-of-the-box tools for analysis and data science workflows right inside of ArcGIS Pro. But of course, we aren't limited to the methods in ArcGIS. 
We can use Python to integrate any of the rich and sophisticated packages that are out there. And we can use the R ArcGIS bridge to take advantage of the powerful world of R. Thank you.